Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're staying safe and healthy out there. And today I get to talk about Luminar AI. It was pre-announced today by my friends over at Skyloom Software, makers of Luminar, which is an app you already know that I love, adore, and use every day. This is the next version. It is coming this holiday season, and I've got a whole lot to talk to you about. Over the last week, uh, this has been moving fast and furious. I'm pretty excited. I'm going to try to contain my excitement because I love stuff like this. It's like Christmas, but over the last week, I've had I've been in a big briefing with Skyloom people. I was in a, a small kind of intimate uh, briefing with their executives. I've had a few different calls and messages with some of their execs learning about this product, and I'm going to share everything I can in my exclusive pre preview discussion and insight here where I'm talking about what this product is going to be. To be clear, I don't have the product. I cannot demo the product. Nobody has the product outside of Skyloom, so you're not gonna see it anywhere yet, but as soon as I have it, you know I'm gonna be back here sharing more and more. Today, I'm gonna give you everything I can about the product. Let's get started right here with the logo. That's the new logo, and I have to be really honest, I came this close to putting on a Pink Floyd t-shirt for the video. I mean, this close. I just almost did it, but I didn't. Um, it is AI-based photo editing. It is actually going to be awesome. It is going to be faster. I'm pretty excited about it. The first thing I want to tell you is that they start pre-orders today. And if you didn't know this, I have an affiliate link down below. If you click that link and pre-order, I get a small commission. It costs you nothing extra. It gives me a few dollars for every order that's placed, and that helps me a lot. I provide all this free training here on this channel, which I love to do. It's a labor of love. That's an easy way to help support me doesn't cost you anything. And in fact, the pre-order period starting today, they've got a pretty awesome offer going. As I said, it starts today and early bird pricing for the first 30,000 purchasers. So if you're interested, I recommend hitting pause on this video. Click the link down below. Go buy your copy. You're not going to get it until this holiday season, but you have a 30-day money-back guarantee that starts from when it ships. So there's literally no risk if you order today. You can see the pricing here. It's $59 for one seat. If you're a current owner of Luminar, in any iteration, or Aurora HDR, any version of that, $69 for two seats. If you're uh, a new customer, it's $69 for one seat and $79 for two seats. And so that's the pricing. As I said, early bird pricing is for the first 30,000 people, and then it goes up. Um, you're gonna get access to the Luminar AI Insiders community. I've joined that. As you can see here, it is a private community for pre-order customers only. It's pretty cool stuff. Exclusive access to the Skyloom team. There's gonna be tutorials. There's gonna be lots going on. It's a neat little website slash community that they've built. I'm in there, I'm checking it out. I think you're gonna have fun being in there with us and learning more. You're gonna get earlier access to the software. You're also gonna get earlier access to information about coming features if you're a part of the insiders community. So that comes free with your pre-order if you get the early bird pricing. It ships this holiday season. We don't have a date, right? Um, holiday season is to me kind of November to like early January. I don't have an exact date. I don't wanna to try to tell you that there's an exact date. There's not an exact date. But it's this holiday season, so sooner the better because I'm excited to get it. But you'll get it. Uh, early bird purchasers get the app first, as it says here, so keep that in mind. Um, and a couple other things. As I already mentioned, 30-day money-back guarantee. So that starts at the ship date, as I mentioned. And literally, there's uh, you, know, you can buy it now and then decide later if you want to keep it. Again, super helpful to me personally if you uh, click my link uh, to take advantage of this pre-order offer and whether you do it or not, I'm going to be back here every week making videos about Luminar because I love to do it. It's my favorite product. And as new features come out and are announced and I'm able to disclose them, you can be just certain that I'm going to be sitting here making videos about it. So come back, check it out, subscribe if you haven't yet. The first thing I want to talk to you about, and there's a lot to unpack here, I'm going to go kind of fast because there's so much to talk about and I'm afraid we won't cover it all. But the first question is probably, what is Skylum doing? Well, this is an AI-based product. AI is literally at the core of the product. The engine has been rebuilt around the idea of AI. It's to help people make better photos in less time and basically reinventing the photo editing process. As you can see here, the focus is really on results. They don't want to focus on tools or processes because most people, when they come to photo editing, they just want a good photo at the end. They may or may not care about the process or the tools, 
but they definitely care about the end result. And this is about getting you to that end result, which you're gonna love much more quickly and with less complexity. And it's really designed in addition to professional photographers, people like you, people like me, hobbyist photographers, people that love to edit photos. It's also designed to address other types of creators, visual communicators, you know, visual storytellers, you know, pick your description. It's appealing, I think, to a wider audience, people that want to get better at looking photos. So bloggers, business owners, educators, marketers, things like that. I'm moving on. Take a look. Now, the UI or user interface is not locked. So I don't have official screenshots. They gave us these and they said we can use them. This gives you an idea though about uh, and I'll show you a few of these throughout this presentation, but this gives you an idea about kind of what's going on with the software. Um, it, it looks like the UI slightly changed. Um, a lot of the existing tools in Luminar 4 are going to be in Luminar AI, but you can see here, skin AI, body AI. Gosh, I wonder what that could be. They're infusing AI, AI into so many components of this product. Structure AI, and then even says color AI. I'm super curious about that. No, I don't know anything about it yet, but if you've watched any of my videos, you know I love my color. The key message here is you can get a lot of power without getting a lot of complexity. That's why I don't use Photoshop. Is it powerful? Absolutely. Is it complex? Ugh, my God. Can they make it any harder, right? That's one of the reasons I love Luminar. So much power, and it's about to get an increase in power based on AI, which is also going to reduce complexity for those that don't want to take advantage of you know, getting into the tools. You can still do that, though. We're going to talk about that. Five whys. Why do they make this product? Number one, you're going to save time. Lots of traditional, really every app out there that's a traditional photo editor, they have techniques and while capable, like in Photoshop, they're time consuming. A lot of people want to get to the end result. So how can you do that? You can get more things done having an AI based approach, getting complexity out of the way and letting AI take over some of the manual processes and repeatable tasks. You're going to get creative inspiration. Sometimes you sit down and I do this. I'm as guilty as anybody. I sit down and I literally scratch my head and I'm like, what do I want to do with this photo? I don't really know. Sometimes it would kind of be great to just have some ideas or some suggestions. Luminar AI has solved that problem. They're going to have a recommendation engine. We're going to talk about that in a minute. It's going to provide suggestions for you. I think that's really cool. It's going to help you remove stress from your workflow and from your editing. It can be overwhelming, as I said, having to learn tools and processes and things like that. Some people don't want to learn it. Maybe I'm kind of nerdy. I love learning that stuff. It's fun for me, but there are times when I just want to edit and go quickly. So those in the Luminar 4, that's when I've used a look or a preset. There's new ways of doing that, and there's new things that are going to help us achieve better results more rapidly. But it's going to help you find a direction and get down that path as quickly as possible, saving you time, reducing your stress, helping you with your creativity. And um, speaking of creativity, you're going to end up with striking beautiful photos. So I'm going to talk about what Luminar AI is, and in a minute, I'm going to talk about what it is not. By the way, I've got some super important things I need to talk about, and they're going to be kind of sprinkled throughout this. I'm doing this in a particular order, but I, I encourage you to watch this video to the end. I'm trying to go quickly. Um, it is an entirely new product. It's got an entirely new engine underneath it. That's going to become really important in a couple of slides when I tell you something that you need to be aware of. It is built from the ground up to leverage AI. Um, you've heard this before, using neural networks to help you solve, solve real world image editing problems. That is no different than some of the AI tools that were in Luminar 4. However, the difference is that was a traditional photo editor, Luminar 4, with some AI tools on top of it. This is an AI engine underneath, so everything is enhanced and enabled by AI. So the neural networks have got, gotten better at recognizing things, and again, we're going to talk about that in a minute. The focus here is on results, not processes. As I've said kind of before, it's going to help you choose adjustments to make based on the content of your photo. Because it's AI based, it can figure things out. We're going to get to that in a second. It uses semantic segmentation. It recognizes the content of the image. It can say, that's a sky, that's a, that's land, that's a human, etc. Again, some of the tools in Luminar 4 had this capability, now it's built into the engine underneath all of that. So AI is really driving the entire product. 
So now when you open an image, instantly it's gonna get analyzed. Recommendations are gonna be provided via a new thing called templates. Templates sound to me, if you recall, it used to be presets, and then it became looks, which allowed you to do a little bit more than presets. Now we're, we're using templates in Luminar AI, and these templates are gonna incorporate what you could do with a look and what you could do with a LUT or a preset, all those kind of things, but it's gonna have even more capability. It is, as I said, gonna have a recommendation engine. You're gonna be able to tag those templates and say, this template is for sunsets, this template is for portraits, and then when you open a photo, it's gonna be able to analyze and say, that's a sunset, and then the template is gonna say, what about this template? Because this template is built for sunsets. I want to point out this major, big, all bold thing at the bottom. You still have full control over your edits. This is what we're going to talk about in a couple of slides when I tell you what Luminar AI is not. But I wanted to be clear about that. You have full control. You can take advantage of this recommendation engine with these templates, or you can say, I want to edit myself. You're going to have the option. I think that's pretty awesome. If you saw their press release, they've got a few things in here. I'm making some educated guesses on some new tools that are coming. Nobody has said, hey, Jim, go talk about this. Uh, but this is in the press release. Therefore, it's for public consumption, which means we get to make some educated guesses about it. Body AI sculpting, that sounds like a slimming. Just like the face slimmer, that sounds like you can slim a body if you would choose to or like to um, and possibly go the other way if you would like to. Face AI, I'm guessing, is a combination of the tools that have been used in the past. Iris AI, they've talked a little bit about with me, that is really focused on the eyes itself and giving you some really creative control over that. And Skin AI, I think it's gonna be the skin smoothing and things like that. Um, atmosphere AI for landscape photography, sounds really cool. I don't know anything about it, but I'm kind of fired up. I think it's gonna be cool. Sky AI is, I'm thinking, gonna be kind of related to the sky replacement that you're already familiar with. Down at the bottom, Structure AI. Again, we already know that tool. Composition AI, I love that. They're using AI to suggest composition improvements, um, such as cropping uh, and straightening. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty excited about that because I crop and straighten every photo because I'm always crooked. Um, and Accent AI, which by the way, was called Accent AI and then became AI Accent, which I could never get. I always called it Accent AI. Now it looks like it's called Accent, Accent AI again. So I'm kind of excited about that. I'm gonna quit calling it the wrong thing because I'm gonna keep calling it the thing it's now called again. Does that make any sense? I think you know what I'm talking about. Let's take another look here. Look at the top of this screenshot. You've got catalog and then you've got templates, and then you've got edit, and then you've got publish. I really wanna focus on that for a second because catalog, it's not called library anymore. They've told me that the features and functions in the catalog are basically the same. So you're not looking at any innovations or additions that I'm aware of at this time in the catalog, but they are calling it a catalog. I think it's basically gonna be an easy way to find images. And then once you find an image, you can jump over to templates. And so I think these are in this order for a reason. So you jump over to templates, the recommendation engine will kick in and say, hey Jim, that's a sunset shot. You tag this template with sunset, maybe this would be what you wanna do, or maybe this, or maybe one of these five. Instead of in the past, you had 400 looks or whatever you've got, you know, five different looks packs, and you're like, I'm uh, just going to go through and look at the previews and try them all out and try to decide. Now the templates are going to suggest for you based on the kind of photo. And again, it knows the kind of photo because it's AI. The third step is edit. That is, you can take the template as is. You can increase or decrease the strength of it, or you can go edit. So I think these steps here at the top are in order on purpose. I think you can go from catalog and go straight to edit. If you just want to jump in to sliders like some people I know, um, I'm gonna use templates too, I promise, and there will be videos about them, I promise, but edit's gonna allow you to get in there and move those sliders around and do what you wanna to do to customize the photo to your specific needs, wants, desires, whatever it may be. And lastly, publish. Notice it doesn't say export. This is not just, hey, let's kick the photo out of Luminar and let me go put it on Facebook and share it with my friends. It's called publish. I don't know anything about what publish is, I'm making an educated guess here that that's gonna get some attention and get bigger and broader. I think it's gonna be an easy way to export, of course, but I also think it's gonna be broader than that where they're gonna say easily publish to, let's call it the flickers of the world or the 500px or the smug mug portfolio, if you have that, or easily publish to Facebook or I was gonna say Instagram, but I guess you can't really do that from a desktop. Um, 
or uh, Twitter or whatever it might be. I think that there's some things that are going to be unveiled there that I'm pretty excited about. And it's about how do you quickly find the photo you want to edit, edit the photo, share the photo. I think they're working on making this process easy because if you're like me, I've got 300 and something thousand photos in my library and my Flickr account has like 7,000 photos in it. I've got a woefully large amount of stuff I've never touched and everybody else is the same. You have the same problem I have. You come back from a trip or an outing and you've taken dozens of photos, maybe hundreds of photos, maybe thousands of photos and you share 10, right? The hope is here to speed up that process. Use AI to get you to results more quickly. Thank you for staying with me. I'm trying to hurry. What Luminar AI is not. This is not photo lemur. This is not some juiced up version of photo lemur, which is a very consumer-y, one slider, AI-based product. It's cool. I've used it. It's fun. This is not what this is. This is also not Luminar 5. Luminar 4 is what it is. The next version of Luminar is Luminar AI. So this is not Luminar 5. It's a new product with an entirely new engine underneath it. I also want to point out it's not complete and utter release of you know automation to where everything is uh, or release of editing to where everything is automated. Um, it automates complex and mundane tasks, but you still have full control. So you're not sticking in there hitting the easy button one time and never doing anything again. Can you do that? Sure. Are you required to do that? No. Important things to know. Luminar 4 will get free compatibility and performance updates for a year after Luminar AI ships. So that's going to be, let's say we get this by Christmas. I don't know. They said holiday season. But let's say you get it by Christmas this year of 2020. Then let's call it Christmas of 2021 is when they'll stop providing updates uh, around compatibility and performance for Luminar 4. It comes uh, at the $59 early bird price. It's one device. Uh, we mentioned that, and you can that, that would be standalone or plug-in, and you can get additional licenses to run it on multiple computers. Super important things to know. I appreciate you sticking with me. You're going to be glad you saw this slide. There's a couple things I was kind of scratching my head about. Number one, the functionality of layers has been rolled into a new tool. When I first heard this, what I heard was, there are no more layers. That's not entirely true. It is done differently now. You don't actually go add a new layer, as I understand it. You do have a local adjustment tool that solves the problems that most people are using layers for in the first place. You can make specific adjustments to parts of the photo, whether it's a person or an area in the photo. You can overlay textures. I asked repeatedly, hey, does that mean you can add a, a new sky? So if you've got a new sky on your base photo, can you use this local adjustment tool to take that sky image and then invert it and paint it into the water below in order to get a reflection and i was told yes you can so you may not have layers in the traditional way but you have it in a new way i think of this a little bit like the local adjustment tool in lightroom if you've used that before you edit your photo then you click on radial mask and then it opens up a subset of tools that you can use in that radial mask i think of it like that however you're not opening a subset of tools. As I understand it, you're opening up a very broad array of tools. So you've got a lot of capabilities. So even if you don't have layers in the traditional sense, you have the functionality of layers in this new tool. You can sync it with multiple photos. You can store it in a template, which you couldn't do in looks or presets. That's pretty cool. The thing I like about this, and I haven't seen it, the thing I like about it is, is they've, sounds like, solved the, the problems that we face that we need layers for in a different way and not having to add new layers and layers and layers and layers will speed up the performance of the app. I'm kind of excited to try this out. You will definitely, definitely see videos about that. Big deal right here. You cannot, cannot migrate your Luminar 3 or Luminar 4 catalog to Luminar AI. And that is because it is an entirely different engine underneath. So if you're like me, I've got a lot of photos I've edited in Luminar 4. I've got at least the next, uh, what, 14, 15 months, whatever it is, 
to start exporting those finalized photos as a 16-bit TIFF, the biggest file I can get, and saving them um, outside of Luminar 4 in order to transition to Luminar AI, which I am absolutely going to do as soon as I possibly can because of all this new capability. The catalog is going to have essentially the same functionality as today, but because of that new engine there, you can't just say, all right, take my catalog file, move it over, and boom, it works. It's not going to work like that. Here's something that's interesting. You can, however, transfer your looks from Luminar 4 over to Luminar AI. Now, they may look, that look is the wrong word, they may impact your photo in Luminar AI differently. That's because there's a different engine underneath and the tools may read and interpret things differently. So keep that in mind. What you can do is update and save them after you migrate. And here's the thing, if you remember when Luminar 4 came out, there was a deprecated tools or deprecated filters tab that showed up whenever clarity or the individual shadows and highlights or individual uh, whites and blacks sliders were used like on a preset in Luminar 3. And then you use that in Luminar 4, it showed up as a deprecated tool. And what they said is, we eliminated redundancies and you're going to get those in Luminar 4, but they're going to go away in the next version. My guess is they're gone. So if you're relying on the old clarity slider or anything like that, my guess is they're gone. I have an asterisk there because they didn't tell me they're gone, but it makes sense if you remember what they said about deprecated tools when Luminar 4 came out. So keep that in mind, my friends. Okay, one more look here. Here's a landscape, uh, again, a sample photo, a sample screenshot of the UI. The UI is not locked, the software is not finalized. So again, just keep that in mind. But I think you can see the tools are kind of similar. On the right-hand side, you've got Essentials, then you've got Creative, then you've got Portrait, and then you've got Pro. I'm assuming they're called the same thing. This one is called Essentials, that sort of thing. They've got similar icons to what they have in Luminar 4. And we already talked about this stuff across the top. So you can kind of see that there. I wanted to share that. Tech Specs, here's your Tech Specs for Mac. Note. Um, Mac OS 10.12 is not supported. You have to have 13, sorry, 10.13.6 or higher. For Windows, here's your specs. And here, Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 are not supported. You have to have Windows 10 or higher. In every case, they're recommending at least 16 gigs of RAM um, or better. SSD drives make better performance, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, plug-in support. They're going to support Lightroom Classic starting from version 6. They're going to support Photoshop starting from CS5, and they're going to support photos for Mac OS. They are dropping support for Apple Aperture and Photoshop Elements. Keep that in mind. Those are dropped. The ones on the top are going to be supported. One more screenshot that kind of gives you an idea of what the UI may look like. I don't know how many times I've repeated this, but I want to be clear. The UI is not locked. I don't have the software. I'm going based on briefings that I've had with the Skylum team and these screenshots that they've shared with us. Um, summary, a couple of key points to keep in mind. Pre-order start today. The link is below. We covered that. Powerful does not have to be uh, complex, right? You can get really amazing results without all the complexity if you don't want to take advantage of the complexity. If you want an engine to help you drive your editing, Luminar AI is going to be great for you. If you want to manage the process yourself, Luminar AI is still going to be great for you. I'm excited about how it's kind of addressing multiple aspects, um, even within myself. As I said, there are times when I want to edit hardcore, and there's other times when I just kind of want the easy button. P point number three, an entirely new product, new engine underneath it. Four, completely AI-driven editing, but full control for you when you want to take the wheel and steer it yourself. New tools and enhancements are coming. You can see that in the screenshots. You can see that in the press release. There are things that they haven't disclosed um, in, in any uh, amount of detail, but they're coming. So as soon as I get more information, I'll be right here talking to you about it. Plan for the migration. You have a good year or so from now to start exporting finished photos from your Luminar 3 or 4 library to save them in another folder somewhere so that you don't have to worry about trying to get them into Luminar AI. And the very last point, keep an open mind, my friends. Change is scary sometimes. Um, it can be nerve wracking. You're like, oh my God, all this stuff is changing and blah, blah, blah. Believe me, I get that way. I've got to go do things myself. I'm right there with you. And um, you know what? Just I'm going to steer into the skid, for lack of a better word. I think just lean into it and have an open mind and just say, hey, you know what? Software gets better over time. People come up with the new and interesting ways to solve common problems. 
things get more powerful without getting more complex. This is going to make my life easier. I'm going to have fun doing it. That's the approach I'm taking. I think it's going to be really fun and interesting and cool. So keep an open mind about it. I know there's going to be a lot of questions. I will do my best to answer them. But at this point, you know everything I know about Luminar AI if you watch this whole video. And if you did, thanks for sticking with me. I know it was long, but there's a lot to talk about. Luminar AI, get your Pink Floyd t-shirts on. Let's go have some fun editing photos. Hit the link down below to subscribe to my channel. I'll be back really soon with more. And get your pre-orders in ASAP, my friends. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Take care and adios.